The process of diagonalizing a matrix is closely related to finding the eigenvalues and the eigenvectors of a given matrix. And the crux of, of this idea is captured in the following equation. In diagonalizing a matrix, we'll say A, assuming it's square, it's n by n, what we'd like to do is write that matrix in this particular factored form, that is, as the product of three matrices. P, D, and P inverse, where specifically D, for diagonal here, is a diagonal matrix consisting of the eigenvalues of A, and P is the eigenvector matrix uh, with respect to A. In other words, we write the eigenvectors of A to construct P in column form. If possible, we'd like to, given a matrix A, diagonalize it, meaning write it in this particular factored form. Now I use the caveat, if possible, for the reason that not every matrix can be written in this particular factored form. So it's not possible to diagonalize every single matrix. What we need to be able to diagonalize a matrix is essentially we need enough eigenvectors to fill in the matrix P. So to diagonalize a matrix, therefore, we need n, we'll say distinct, again, it's an n by n matrix, n distinct eigenvectors. That is an important note here. So note, we'll say A is diagonalizable if it has n distinct eigenvectors. And the reason we need that criterion met is so that, well, if we have n distinct eigenvectors, I have sort of a sufficient number to fill in for p. And by the way, that matrix will be invertible as a theorem, kind of left over from linear algebra guarantees the existence of p inverse as well. When I fill in the eigenvalues for the uh, diagonal matrix D, and then correspondingly write in the eigenvectors in column form in P, I need to maintain the same order for eigenvalues and eigenvectors as we'll see. So there needs to be a correspondence with, for instance, the first eigenvalue listed in D needs to correspond with the eigen, first eigenvector listed in matrix P. So to diagonalize a matrix, in other words, put it in this particular factored form, I need first and foremost the eigenvalues and the eigenvectors of that matrix. So I'll say we'll begin our method here for diagonalizing a matrix with finding once more our lambdas and their associated eigenvectors. Well, we've done that previously. Let's compute the eigenvalues and eigenvectors for a new matrix. We'll make it a two by two matrix. So let's consider the matrix this time A and let's work with the matrix as follows, 0, 1, 2, 1. So we'd first off like to know if it's diagonalizable. In other words, are there a sufficient number of distinct eigenvectors? In this case, we would need two distinct eigenvectors to properly diagonalize the matrix because it's a two by two matrix. We begin to find, by finding the eigenvalues and then the associated eigenvectors. We get, begin by solving the characteristic equation associated with that matrix namely this one, a minus lambda times the identity, right? We set that equal to zero. So what we get on the left-hand side, it's called the characteristic polynomial. So let's do this in a reasonable number of steps here together. So we have the determinant of the two by two matrix, a, where I essentially subtract lambda from the main diagonal. So that then leaves me with lambda, negative lambda, excuse me, one, two, and one minus lambda. For a minus lambda, we'll take the determinant of that and set it equal to zero. So once again, the determinant of a two by two matrix is computed AD minus BC. So the result then is we have negative lambda times the quantity one minus lambda minus BC here minus two equals zero. So let's go ahead and solve that quadratic equation in lambda as efficiently as possible. So I'll distribute the negative lambda across the binomial term here so I have negative lambda, negative lambda times negative lambda is positive, lambda squared minus two equals zero. 
You could solve this using the quadratic formula, of course, always. Here, though, fortunately enough, this factors. I'm just going to rearrange things just so it's a little more sort of conventional looking. I'll write it in descending order with the power. So lambda squared minus lambda minus 2 equals 0. Once again, that, fortunately enough, factors for us. We can write this then as lambda minus 2 times the quantity lambda plus 1 equals 0. So this implies either lambda equals 2 or lambda equals negative 1. So sure enough, those are the eigenvalues associated with that particular matrix A. So now that we have those eigenvalues of, as 2 and negative 1 for the respective matrix A, we can then go ahead and, as before, compute the eigenvectors uh, associated with each of those eigenvalues. Now I've gone ahead and done that uh, beforehand just to save a little bit of time, but you should check of course, that you can do this following the procedures in the previous sections. So a representative eigenvector associated with eigenvalue 2 is the vector 1, 2. Okay? And I'll label that v sub 2 to indicate that is the eigenvector associated with eigenvalue 2. Now on the other hand, one possible representative eigenvector associated with the value negative 1, eigenvalue negative 1, again I'll use the subscript negative 1 here just to be clear, is the vector 1, negative 1. So here then our objective is to diagonalize the matrix A if possible. And indeed this matrix is diagonalizable, namely because we have two distinct eigenvectors associated with A. So let's go ahead and write out that factorization and then confirm through matrix multiplication that it is in fact valid, it does in fact equal A. So I write A as the matrix P, again that's my matrix of eigenvectors written in column form, so I'll just write it in the same order, I'll say 1, 2, and 1, negative 1. There's my matrix P, okay? And then importantly I write the diagonalized matrix, or the diagonal matrix here, um, in terms of the eigenvalues in the same order in which I listed these eigenvectors. So in other words, I have to list the eigenvalue 2 first, and that goes on the diagonal component there. And then in the second column, I list the, uh, the eigenvalue associated with the second listed eigenvector, which is of course negative 1. So there is my diagonal matrix D, again, maintaining the same order of the eigenvectors listed in P. And then lastly, I compute the inverse of P. Now I've done that for us beforehand, um, and you can check that indeed this uh, matrix P inverse, when I multiply it by P, does end up equaling the identity matrix. Okay, so there is my P inverse matrix. Now we want to go ahead and just to be totally thorough here, multiply those matrices out and confirm that our result is equal to A. Okay, so I've gone ahead and multiplied out those matrices. You, of course, want to check on your own that you can do this successfully. I'll remind you that matrix multiplication is associative, so I can group the multiplications however I like. I've multiplied first the, uh, the first two matrices together. That results in the matrix on the left. I then subsequently multiply by P inverse and sure enough, I'm back to the original matrix A. So indeed, we have a factorization of A. Specifically, we have diagonalized the matrix A.